All right, welcome to FlipMath.com. This is Algebra 1, Comic... Whoa, 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 hold on a second. Let me flip that for you. Oh, see what I did there? FlipMath.com, uh, this is Mr. Bruss, and we're going to start doing some Common Core Algebra 1 here. So welcome to the class. Before we get going, I want to introduce you to your teachers. We are four of us. Uh, we go by the Algebros. I am right there in the middle, Mr. Bruss. I'm at Ramstein High School. I co-teach there with Mr. Bean, also at Ramstein High School. I want to give a quick shout-out to my peeps over at K-Town. I used to be at K-Town. There's Mr. Sullivan at the bottom. And over here is Mr. Kelly. Uh, we'll talk more about these guys later on as we get going. But these are your four teachers. We kind of rotate chapters and whatnot, so you'll get a little bit of everybody there. Fantastic. This was our first Alja selfie, and uh, it was our best one. That's amazing that that is our best Alja selfie right there. So uh, I'm going to turn down the music here, and turn down for what? Turn down for algebra. Here we go. All right, here we go. So this first chapter here is about creating and analyzing graphs and expressions. So the first two sections, we're going to kind of uh, create some graphs and analyze them, and then the last three, we're going to create expressions, mathematical expressions, and analyze those. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, I really enjoy it. So the first thing we're going to start doing, and let's jot this down, we're going to start making some scatter plots. So a scatter plot is just when you go ahead and graph a set of points. So a scatter plot is just uh, a set of points is all it is. You're graphing a set of points here. In this case, I gave you a table of points here. So these are points. So uh, if you don't like the looks of that, this is a point. It's just two comma one dollar. Uh, two ounces would cost you one dollar. Five ounces would cost you two fifty. Uh, seven ounces, three fifty. So this is a set of points right here, and we're going to make it a scatter plot. So if you look over here on the graph, yours won't match mine. Uh, this is different. Hold on a second. I just want to do a quick review. This is the Cartesian plane right here. And when we plot points, we go x comma y, and we do that because of you know we've got this x axis, y axis thing going on, and we can plot these different points. But a lot of times in these word problems, uh, we're only looking at one of the quadrants. So there's the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. In this case, what are we looking at? Let, ooh, look at this fanciness right here. Ooh, wow. Uh, wow. What quadrant am I looking at? I'm really only looking at the first quadrant. So don't freak out here uh, when I don't graph these other quadrants. We're just kind of, they're not there. You don't need to show them. Why? Because I have no negatives. I don't have any negative uh, numbers here. So I've kind of zoomed in here on the first quadrant. Now we can start writing stuff down again. So that's why your graph is, I only limited to this first quadrant. And let's take a look. Before we go ahead and plot these points, let's talk about these things. We've got an independent variable and a dependent variable. Uh, they're pretty much just what their name says. Uh, the independent variable is independent. The formal fancy definition, uh, let's write this down, is the quantity that's being manipulated. This is independent. You can change it, do whatever you want to it. Uh, it's, a lot of times you'll see it as the input. And later on when we talk about functions, we'll talk about input. But it's the x. Uh, it's the x-axis. is what goes on the x-axis. So what is the dependent one? Well, the dependent variable obviously is dependent on the independent. It's the quantity whose values depend on those manipulations. So uh, as you put things in, this is your output. This is what's coming out, and this is the y. So sometimes your variables, one causes one to change. In this case, my weight, however much I buy, is causing my price to change. So it's maybe the more I, uh, the more weight, the heavier it is, the more I pay for it. So in this case, this is my X and this is my Y. So I want to get really good at labeling stuff. Like we really need to label this X axis. So this is the weight. So you have to label it. And not only have to label it, what is it in? In this case, it is measured in ounces. So you got to put both. I want the, the label and the unit. Over here, the Y axis is the price. And this is in dollars. So there's our price. So now what we're going to do, we can put a title on this bad boy here. This could be your Froyo graph. I don't really care what you call it. Uh, if you want to put uh, the price over weight or something like that, you can. Now let's plot these points on here. So these points, well, we need a scale. So when I think about this, uh, the key to scales, you have to have, like, what am I going to count by here? Well, I look at these x values. Uh, I've got all the way up to 14. Sometimes I can just make it. Let's see if it makes it. One, two, three, four, five. I think I'm going to make it. So this is great. I'm going to count by ones. And in the paper I gave you here, it works out perfectly. So I kind of hooked myself up here with some nice numbers. How about this? I only have to get to seven. Well, I know this is more than seven. You could count by dollars. 
you can actually count by anything you want. You can count by 25 cents. You can count by two dollars. I don't really care. Uh, it just kind of helps you. Better graphs are, you know, if you got a scale where you can graph nice and neat. In this case, I think I'd probably try 50 cents here because I see a lot of 50 cents here. So I'm going to go 50 cents, one dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars, two fifty, and I hope yours is nicer on your paper than mine. It's kind of hard for me to write that small. Four dollars. Uh, what is this? Four fifty. Five dollars. Oh my goodness. I'm having some issues. Five dollars. Got the lead there. Sorry. Five fifty. Six dollars. Is it gonna fit here? We got six fifty and we have finally seven dollars. So hopefully on your paper it looks a little bit nicer than that. And now let's plot these points. So what are these points? Remember two uh two ounces is one dollar. Five ounce makes two fifty. So here's over five up to the two fifty marker right here. And remember these are all the points. Remember, this is the X and the Y. You go over five up two fifty. So over in the X direction, then up or down in the Y direction. Uh let's see. Seven makes three fifty. So put a dot right there. Looking good. Number nine, nine ounces would be four fifty. Twelve ounces would be six dollars up here. And fourteen ounces would be seven. Dollars and you're now 14 ounces. We're we're pushing a pound here. And you're like, who buys that much uh, froyo? Well, funny story. Uh, Mr. Kelly does. I actually one time took him. We went to a frozen yogurt place, and I said, hey man, my treat, Mr. Kelly. And no kidding, this is what he bought. Unbelievable. He's pretty much that guy right there. So here's our plot of points right here. People do buy a lot of yogurt. Uh, and if you look at this, this looks very linear. It looks like a line, and we're going to talk about that later on. But for now, I want to make sure we got a scatter plot. We're just graphing a set of points. Independent, dependent variable. Fantastic. <laughs> Moving on here. So uh, let's take a look at this. So our story in this case is going to be somebody playing Jeopardy, and this is their score over time. So when I'm looking at the independent variable, what is my independent variable? Well, I'll give you a big hint here. Anytime you have time, <laughs> it's usually time. Time causes things to happen. It's independent of anything. Like So in this case, it's time. That's my label. And what is it measured in? Make sure you have your units. It's measured in minutes. So unless you're trying to do something weird, time is usually that independent variable. What's happening? What's dependent on time? Well, the guy's score. And I'll use S. That's kind of a tricky variable. You could use you know, whatever you want, P for points, Y for whatever. I don't whatever. I don't care. S kind of looks like five, so you got to be careful with it. But it is his score, uh, and it is in points. So the time is causing this to happen. So what I want you to do is we know this is the independent, the time, and this is the dependent right here. I want you to come over here and finish this graph. So go ahead and I'm going to hit make sure your scale is consistent. Don't don't jump around. What I want you to do is pause it right now. Take some time, make this graph and then unpause it and see if your graph uh looks good. All right, here we go. Check out my graph over here. So hopefully yours looks something like this. Uh just to hook you up with my scale, I decided to count by twos. You can't count by ones cuz there's not 26 uh tick marks there. You count by twos, you could count by threes as long as you're consistent it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I'm going two, four, six, eight, ten. You could have gone three, six, nine, twelve, whatever. Uh, but I went by twos. It fits in there nicely. Then over here again, you I counted by hundreds. You could have counted by two hundreds. I don't know. It's just we'll have the same shape of this graph. Like he is definitely going up in points, then losing points, and then gaining points again here. So we'll have the same shape, but yours just may be more smushed or spread out than mine. But we'll definitely have the general shape. So I counted by hundreds. You can't skip around. You can't say this is three, then eight, then eleven, just because that's what the points do up there. That's a major no-no. Going to have some uh, big issues there. Fantastic. So there is my Jeopardy graph. All right, now let's get to some good stuff here. Let's analyze some graphs. So I gave you this graph of Mr. this is Mr. Brust. He likes to run to work, and so this is uh, him running to work. And so, like, let's go back and take a look at when we analyze things. We can analyze anything. We analyze things all the time in real life. Let's take a look at this. And I showed you the picture of the algebra in the beginning. Remember, Mr. Brust and Mr. Bean are at Ramstein, so I'll put them in blue. And then something uh, here's red. Here's K Town right here. We got Kelly and Sully. He goes by Sully sometimes are in red and if I want to analyze this picture you know what are some things I can come up with well probably a lot of different things but the first thing that comes to mind my mind if I look at these I look at the Ramstein teachers and I, I see they have more hair than the Cape Town teachers so one thing I could come from draw from this is that Ramstein math teachers have more hair than Cape Town math teachers uh, that picture is actually looking pretty good for Mr. Kelly I think that's an old picture because I think that hairline's uh, not quite like that anymore <laughs> 
All right, so what else can we analyze? Well, let's take a look and analyze this graph over here. And I'm going to slide it over right next to the table here just so we can kind of zoom in there and check things out. So basically, I want to analyze what's going on. So if I give you a picture, can you fill in the table? Sure, no problem. Uh, we're going to fill in our independent and dependent variables. So on the x-axis, I have time. Again, time is causing things to happen. And that is, in this case, measured in minutes. So we know what we're talking about here. And be real specific. I don't give you a lot of room, but you have to write the whole thing. It is distance from house. This is Mr. Bruss, how far he is from his house as he runs to work. This is measured in meters. You could just write a plain old M if you want, and that's in meters. Fantastic. So now let's fill in these points. These are points on the graph. So when X is 3, what is the Y value? Well, there it is right there. Boom. 400. Love it. How about when X is 5? X is 5. Ooh, it's not exact, is it? So it's almost 700. So we're going to use this little wavy line here to say it's about 680. So remember, you have this for equals, but this thing means approximately. So it's approximately uh, somewhere around that number. So we're going to use that for approximately. So if you put 679, yeah, I'm not going to mark you wrong. It's got to be some, just as long as you're close to somewhere around 680. How about 7? Does it make something? Sure, 7 makes 800. What about 9? Nine? 9 makes, there's the dot right there, so here are the points, and it also makes 800. Very interesting. And now check this out. Whoa, now I'm giving you 1,100, so I'm actually giving you a dependent variable. So I'm saying, hey, when is the distance 1,100? So you got to do it the other way. I'm going to say, oh, what happens here? It looks like that hits at 11 minutes. Boom, very nice. And then 1,600, this one's super cool because check this out. It hits once, and then it hits again over here, so you're actually going to have two answers. Here's the big hint right here. You see a split line? Two answers. That's what that means. You got to plug them in. So this happens at the 13 minute marker and also 17 uh, minute marker. So he actually hits it twice. Pretty cool. Let's get rid of all that stuff because I'm going to move this graph. So we can fill in the points on this graph. And this is kind of what's called a piecewise function. We're going to study this later on where I've got a bunch of different lines represented. Let me slide this back over here. So I've got a bunch of different lines uh, showing. Mr. Bruss running to work. The intervals, and let's take a look at these intervals. And you're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to jot these down here. So you have to fill this in. The first time interval I want to look at is 0 to 5, 6 to 10. These are different moments in time. And I want to know what's happening on this graph. What is going on? So if I look at this graph and I say, hey, 0 to 5 minutes. So the 0 to 5 minutes is this chunk right here. So 0 to 5 minutes, what's happening? Well, it's increasing. The graph is increasing. You could be very specific here. I'm, I'm cool with just saying it's increasing. You could say, yeah, man, he goes 800 meters in the first six minutes. So uh, that's not very fast, I'm just realizing. I should have made better numbers here. Uh, it's more of a walk to work than a run. So he goes 800 meters in uh, six minutes right there. So uh, it's increasing. And what's happening? I'm moving away from my house. I'm running away from my house. That sounds weird, like I'm a little kid or something. I'm not really... I'm, I am running away from my house, but like, you know what I mean. Running away from the house. Running away from house. So that's what's happening in my story. I'm running away from the house. The line is increasing. Well, what's happening from 6 to 10 here? So from 6 to 10, it, it kind of flatlines. Well, what, what's that mean if I flatline? It means I'm not moving. My distance is staying a constant. I'm not moving. I'm just stuck at 800 feet. Maybe I'm tired. Maybe I had a cramp and I just stopped moving. Interesting. How about from 10 to 13? Again, I'm increasing. I'm getting further away from home, so I started running again. So I caught my breath, started running again. What happens here from 13 to 15? Oh, 13 to 15. Whoa, I'm going the wrong way. My line is decreasing here. And what does that mean in my story? Well, it means I am heading home. That's weird. I'm actually heading home. I'm running towards my house. That's weird. Why could that happen? Well, maybe I dropped my iPhone. I don't know. Maybe my smartphone. I was like, oh, man, I dropped it, Psh, ran back, got it. And then what happens here? This little second, I flatlined. I'm not moving again. So now maybe I'm checking to make sure my, my face plate didn't break or something. Like I'm checking out, make sure everything's cool. And then what do I do? It starts this last chunk from 16 to 20 minutes. It's increasing again. And I'm running back away. So very interesting things going on here. You can tell I actually ran 2,200 meters total. So that's probably work right there. And it took me 20 minutes to do that. Excellent. So those are looking at specific time intervals of this piecewise function. So one thing I want you to be really, really, really good at is tell me what points mean. The point 18, 1800 means what in this context? Well, you just got to label it. It just means at 18, what, 18 apples, 18 oranges, miles, feet, peaches. What are these things? At 18x, 
which is time. So at 18 minutes, what's going on? Mr. Brust, here's the Y. What's the Y? Y is meters from home. Mr. Brust is 1,800 meters from his house. So you got to take some time to write these bad boys out. I want big sentences here telling me exactly what's going on. But basically, it's a fancy way of labeling everything. 18 minutes, 1,800 meters from the house. Excellent. Very good. All right, a little story time here. This is pretty cool. Professor Splash is the world record holder for the belly flop. He did a 36-foot belly flop into a one-foot pool of water. What I'd like you to do real quick, I'm going to show you a video of this, but I'm looking for a graph of his height over time. So fill this in, label it. I want to see uh, Professor Splash height over time. Check out this video to help you out. That is super cool. It's so cool. Uh, let's check out some different angles of it. All right, there it is. Awesome. Uh, so what kind of graph did you get? So um, if before we get to look at the graph, if you look at this SMP number four over here, these are the standards of mathematical practice. You'll see these in our packets as we go along. Um, this is just good ways of teaching math, and there's eight of them, and this is number four, modeling mathematics, modeling real life uh, using mathematics. So in this case, I hope you came up with a model. At least I hope you tried, and, and we'll see how you did here. Uh, his height should be here. should be at, what, 36, so make sure you labeled his height in feet. 36 feet. Uh, you could have made up a scale or just made a rough graph. I'm not too concerned here, but you could have counted by sixes or something if you wanted. I don't really care. And then what happens? Uh, some people may have done something like this, like a straight line. That's a good idea, but it's really more curved line like this because you pick up speed as you fall. So you pick up speed. If you really went for it, you maybe even drew the water in there. I don't know, at one foot, you drew a little water, and technically what would happen, he, wouldn't, he would actually slow way down. This is what causes him from like breaking his face, I suppose, is it slows him down. So maybe perfect graph would be a piecewise where a curve to align something like that. That's awesome. If you want to see the real one, this is the real one right here, uh, again, without the water. The water would be somewhere down here. It would change his momentum, but this is the official uh, perfect graph. If you drew that, you are a beast. You are good to go. That is it right there. Uh, fantastic. Make sure you take your time on the practice. Really do them. Grade them. Again, your graphs don't have to match mine perfectly, but they do have to be right. So double check mine. You don't have to be word for word how I say things, but again, it has to be correct. So take your time with them. There's not a ton of problems, but I really want you to think about them. Write out your answers. Have good answers. Uh, grade the practice, and you're going to do great on the master check. Uh, good luck on the master check. Peace out.